step one is actually having that as a goal. If you don't have that as a goal, you're definitely not going to achieve it. Um, if you have it as a goal, well, now at least you have a chance of achieving it. That is what Elon Musk said in the recently released conversation. And this is also how SpaceX is pursuing insane goals with its giant machine. Explosion? Loss of vehicles? Is that an obstacle? Will it put SpaceX down? Whatever it is, everything that just happened in the third launch of the Starship is an opportunity to achieve SpaceX's goal. That's why the president of SpaceX quickly revealed about the fourth flight of the Starship. This not only shocked the space community, but also shocked NASA scientists. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX's program is in a phase of continuous development, and this is an opportune time for us to talk about the fourth Starship flight. The main characters here are Ship 29 and Booster 11. How are they doing in preparation? We're no stranger to SpaceX's swift work. To be honest, just within 10 days since the third Starship launch, SpaceX has been bustling with preparations for the fourth launch. This is truly an incredible time frame for a super heavy vehicle to launch into space. Just look at it. Even a super heavy rocket like NASA's SLS took over a decade to achieve its first flight by the end of 2022. Not to mention it reused some parts from retired space shuttles. The legendary Saturn V moon rocket also took an average of six to seven months to launch a space mission. In fact, the preparation seems to be even earlier than we thought, as Ship 29 has been seen moving back and forth at the launch site, even while Ship 28 is still on the launch pad. After being rolled out and hoisted onto suborbital pad B, Ship 29 conducted a full-duration static fire with ignition of six Raptor engines on March 26th. The footage of this event has been publicly released on SpaceX's X social. This is an incredibly impressive pace because after the second flight, SpaceX took over a month to conduct static fire for Ship 28, but now they've been able to reduce that time to just under two weeks for Ship 29. It's undeniable that as they progress to future flights, SpaceX becomes more efficient in optimizing test waiting times. However, that's not the end for Ship 29. With greater responsibility and expectations than its predecessors, Ship 29 is expected to undergo multiple static fires as part of the preparation process for the upcoming flight. These static fires serve as crucial tests to validate engine performance and rehearse key procedures, including Raptor's reignition in space, a critical aspect of future missions. Burning in space is crucial for missions such as orbit insertion, orbit control, trajectory adjustments, and again burns. These burns require precise engine control to ensure the spacecraft reaches its intended destination or performs planned maneuvers accurately. After these tests, Ship 29 may return to the high bay for final touches, such as installing covers for the Starlink antennas. It may also undergo modifications to address certain details related to issues identified during the third flight, such as malfunctioning payload bay doors during opening and closing operations, or gas links due to internal pressure in the payload bay. Ship 29's partner, Booster 11, has been stationed at the Mega Bay workstation since November 20th. Booster 11 has already completed cryogenic testing and will be ready for static fire testing immediately after the orbital launch mount OLM is operational again for testing. Meanwhile, the OLM will require some repairs and work. Teams have removed the Booster Quick Disconnect BQD hook to detect significant damage to the liquid oxygen, LOX, and liquid methane, LCH4 feed hoses that supplied the booster's propellant. The damage is believed to be caused by exhaust from the engines hitting the opposite side of the launch pad with the BDQ system, exacerbated by the launch pad avoidance maneuver performed immediately after engine ignition. This failure has prompted SpaceX engineers to make adjustments to minimize such damage in future launches. They must be repaired or replaced before any testing can be conducted on the OLM. To address these concerns, SpaceX plans to delay the launch pad avoidance maneuver by a few seconds during the upcoming flight, allowing for a safer trajectory and reducing the likelihood of damage to critical components. Additionally, efforts are underway to replace the damage hoses swiftly, ensuring minimal impact on the program's timeline. Undoubtedly, many changes will occur as SpaceX's goal is an ambitious one, believed to be much larger than any government program, which is to create rockets and spacecraft capable of sustaining life on multiple planets. Starship is truly the holy grail of the rocket manufacturing industry, fully and rapidly reusable because at that point, you're really limited by your propellant costs. According to Elon Musk in a recent interview, he analyzed this. Indeed, the Starship rocket contains nearly 80% of its payload as liquid oxygen and 20% of its fuel as liquid methane, a type of fuel with very low costs. Add to that the possibility of full reuse and just needing to refurbish as an aircraft, and you know, the actual cost of the propellant is probably a million dollars or less per flight. That's the Starship, which has more flights better than any other vehicle. 
Therefore, the fact that Starship takes additional flights to achieve stable operations is entirely justified by the tremendous benefits it brings. So, what next is the purpose of the four Starship flight? Six weeks is enough time for SpaceX to upgrade its Starship rocket. This was announced by a senior SpaceX official at a satellite conference. On the other hand, in practical terms, SpaceX has already clearly gained a lot of experience in upgrades through the three previous launches. These improvements help the vehicle more reliably in its flight test, thus giving it access to the goal that its predecessors missed and more. Most likely, the plans for Flight 4 would include being better in control of the Super Heavy booster on the descent, securing heat shield tiles, and eliminating roll issues on Starship during orbital operations and re-entry. Besides that, Shotwell highlighted that Flight 4 would not have satellites on board. Things are still in trade, but I think we're still going to focus on getting re-entry right and making sure we can land these things where we want to land them, she explained. Also in the conference, Gwyn Shotwell stated that the goals for the Starship program this year are to reach orbit, deploy satellites, and recover both stages. Well, this goal seems quite reasonable and exciting, doesn't it? In the third Starship launch, the rocket achieved orbit, which means the first objective has been accomplished. Next, they'll have to recover both stages of the Starship rocket. It remains unclear whether recovery in this context means a catch or just a successful landing. But we can speculate. Why doesn't SpaceX catch the boosters on their fifth launch? They certainly could do so, but they would face many risks in the landing, the worst being the potential destruction of the launch pad area. Although SpaceX is known for its risk-taking ability, it currently has only one Starship launch tower, and if it were destroyed, it would lose a considerable amount of time, perhaps even more than the time it took to rebuild the launch pad from scratch. Therefore, the better option for Starship is to successfully recover both the booster and the Starship, even if it lands in the sea. Until they know that they can truly fly and land them, I think they'll want to launch as frequently as possible. However, the story of catching the Starship mid-air will probably be more for later flights, Flight 6 or 7, rather than the upcoming Flights 4 or 5. Surely the later flights will be more interesting, as Elon Musk said. I think we've got a, a decent shot of achieving um, full reusability of both stages, uh, the booster and the ship, uh, this year. Um, and if not this year, I think, you know, knock on wood, it's like, I think it's a very high probability of achieving full reusability uh, next year. So, when exactly will Starship have Starlink as the payload? We have no idea, but I'm pretty sure once it can do that, SpaceX could start making money off Starship. Imagine how crazy their cost to conduct business would be massively reduced if a Starship could get 100 tons of Starlinks into LEO. Roughly two-thirds of SpaceX's launches in 2023 were devoted to building out Starlink, the company's satellite internet mega constellation. That trend will likely continue in 2024, for the network is nowhere near complete. Starlink currently consists of about 5,230 operational satellites, according to the astrophysicist and satellite tracker Jonathan McDowell, but SpaceX has permission to deploy a total of 12,000 Starlink satellites in low Earth orbit, and the company's applied for approval of another 30,000 on top of that. In this case, Starlink clearly can take SpaceX much closer to its goal than ever. Thanks to that, the launch cadence of Falcon 9 would wind down as well. SpaceX VPs in the past have explicitly said that the goal with Starship is to cannibalize their own Falcon 9 launches. While Musk often receives acclaim for his visionary ideas, it's Gwyn Shotwell who truly shines as the driving force behind SpaceX, orchestrating its operations with precision. With her exceptional technological prowess, she's one of the most admired and respected executives in our industry, and is coveted by rival companies worldwide as a formidable ally. So we'll explore why Gwen Shotwell makes people admire not only that, but she also makes the entire rocket industry crazy about her. Though she is not as high profile as SpaceX founder Elon Musk, Gwen is one of the most skilled executives in the entire technology industry and is a major reason for SpaceX's outstanding development. Hiring a capable executive to help realize a grand vision is one of the best things an entrepreneur like Elon can do. Many founders hire adult supervision as their companies start to grow significantly. Mark Zuckerberg hired Sheryl Sandberg as chief operating officer in 2008 when the company was just a few years old. At SpaceX, Gwyn serves both chief operating officer and president of the company. And that additional title is very important. The title of president can mean many different things depending on the company, but for SpaceX, Gwyn holds more power than just a title. In fact, SpaceX wouldn't go far without her. And here are the reasons why. Firstly, Shotwell's leadership style is unique. This is evidenced by SpaceX employees under her leadership. The company has fostered a culture of bravery and resilience, where calculated risk-taking is honored as a catalyst for progress. 
Shotwell's emphasis on rigor in operations and continuous improvement has helped SpaceX achieve notable milestones, from pioneering reusable rocket technology with Falcon 9 to revolutionizing space travel with the development of the Crew Dragon spacecraft. Her steadfast commitment to excellence, as well as her ability to inspire and mobilize teams towards common goals, have been instrumental in propelling SpaceX to the forefront of space exploration. In addition to her leadership and personnel matters, Shotwell also adeptly manages relationships. The first several rockets that SpaceX tried to launch exploded, but Shotwell prevailed in winning a highly sought-after contract with NASA in 2006, nurturing a relationship between the two organizations that continues to this day. Shotwell credits her ability to form strong business relationships as the reason NASA decided to work with SpaceX. When you don't have a rocket to sell, what's really important is selling your team, she says, emphasizing that good customer service and communication help inspire confidence that a company can deliver on a task. Communications within the company is also key. SpaceX implements a policy of continuous feedback, where there's an open-door policy for employees and bosses alike to give each other professional feedback. Shotwell believes that this is the only way for a company to advance successfully. The second reason is that this talented woman always looks to the past for guidance, but knows when to innovate. In the process of designing SpaceX's rockets, Shotwell and her team of engineers draw from designs of the past. We got to look at the rocket industry and the developments to date, and we got to pick the best ideas and leverage them. But SpaceX never shies away from creating new ideas and systems of doing things when improvements can be made. For example, one of SpaceX's major innovations is the reusability of their spacecraft, building parts that can be used again after a spaceflight. We got to make decisions that we wanted to make, she said of her company's attitude toward learning from the past but designing for the future. The third reason is that Shotwell herself is determined and ambitious, aiming towards common goals right alongside with Elon Musk. Shotwell has had to adopt this leadership skill out of necessity. Many people hear Elon announce a bold timeline and immediately dismiss him because it seems impossible. However, Gwen understands that Elon's timelines may be overly ambitious, but he has the right direction for the future of technology. As a result, she fully aligns with his vision. Everyone knows Elon can be a tough boss, but Gwen has worked with Elon for 22 years now, and she wouldn't stay if they weren't both looking squarely at the future. And that's what makes her a great leader at SpaceX. She loves the seemingly impossible goals. Set and try and achieve absolutely absurd goals, but don't be afraid of failing if you can't achieve them, Shotwell said. The idea of setting these absurd goals is incredibly powerful, primarily due to human psychology. This relates to Parkinson's law, which states that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. Simply put, the amount of work required will expand to fill the time that can be allocated to do it. So if the SpaceX team says something like getting to Mars will be extremely difficult and might take 50 years, they're almost certain to spend 50 years on the project. But the risk of setting an absurd goal is very small. Sure, people might ridicule you, but that's not important. Just keep building towards that goal and eventually you'll achieve great things. Elon continues to set these particularly absurd goals, while Gwen tends to be a bit more measured in her estimates. All the time and all the money in the world does not yield the best solution. Putting that pressure on that team to move quickly is really important, Shotwell said. Ultimately, her responsibility is to keep the company alive. But the important thing to note here is that she still fully aligns with Elon on SpaceX's goals. She has the ability, like Elon, to think long-term and imagine what could happen to humanity over many decades rather than just a few years. The fourth reason is Gwen Shotwell's mindset for success. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room, just the hardest worker. We should always strive to learn new things. When deliberately surrounding yourself with people smarter than you, you acknowledge that you don't know everything and allow others to fill in the gaps. At SpaceX, when I'm in a room, I'm never the smartest person in the room, Shotwell admits. Instead of feeling inadequate, Shotwell ensures she learns as much as possible about the topic at hand. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room, but you can be the most prepared. Shotwell does plenty of reading and research before stepping into a meeting on a topic she's unfamiliar with. She places importance on being helpful and not focusing on any negativity she might encounter. Finally, Shotwell's perspective is that diversity is key to finding the best ideas. With 7,000 employees in a traditionally male-dominated industry, SpaceX's current workforce is 12.4% female and 50.3% ethnic minorities, statistics that Shotwell says she wants to improve on. 
On the importance of diversity, Shotwell says, if everyone in the room looks the same, thinks the same, came from the same university, had the same background, they're going to come up with the same answer. And it might be the right one, but it's sure better to have 10 different opinions in a room and 10 different perspectives talking to come up with the right answer. As a leader, there's no knowing where the next great idea might come from. So including people of all genders, ethnicities, and backgrounds on your team increases your chance of success exponentially. In summary, all these reasons have made a woman in the aerospace industry, Gwen Shotwell, the most sought after of all time. Gwen Shotwell's contributions to the space industry have left a lasting legacy far beyond the mere success of a single company. As one of the most influential figures in aerospace, her visionary leadership and steadfast commitment to excellence have reshaped the landscape of space exploration, inspiring generations of explorers and innovators in the future of space. Shotwell's impact on the space industry transcends the boundaries of SpaceX, serving as a beacon of inspiration and empowerment for individuals worldwide who share her passion for exploration and discovery. Through her pioneering efforts, Shotwell has not only propelled SpaceX to unprecedented heights of success, but has also ushered in a new era of possibilities and potential in the journey of space exploration and unraveling the mysteries of the universe. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.